Tom Raftakan is an avid fisherman. In the 80s, he indulged his love of the sport around the oil platforms off the coast of Santa Barbara. He says the waters were teeming with fish. However, four of those platforms eventually ran out of oil to pump and were completely removed about two decades ago. This destroyed the marine communities that had developed around them. Raftakan was part of the sport fishing community that began advocating for a different approach to oil platforms that have reached the end of their economic lifespan. There are 27 oil platforms off the coast of Southern California, from Huntington Beach to Santa Barbara. But in the last few decades, they've become more than just oil pumping machines. They're home to all kinds of fish. And the fish associated at the bottom are different than the fish associated in the middle part of the platform. There are some individuals that move up and down throughout the platform over the course of the day, and there are some that stay at the same level all the time. So in many ways, when you look at the communities associated with platforms, they remind me very much of a city. Another thing that makes a city a city, um, in a good city, you have grocery stores everywhere and you have things to do and you have, uh, you know, police stations and things to keep people safe. Platforms are like the same. They offer habitat and protection for some species. They offer lots of food and not just in terms of fish. There are lots of invertebrates and snails and mussels and and sea stars and things like that that grow on the platform that provide food for the entire community. Kaya Heller leads dives at the platforms through her company Sun Diver International, located in Long Beach. The recreational fishing and diving communities fear the loss of these marine habitats with the complete removal of obsolete oil platforms. Many of California's offshore platforms are nearing the end of their economic lifespan because there is little oil left to pump. Oil companies have historically been under contract to remove the platforms completely once they are done using them. But times have changed. In 2010, then-Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger signed into law a Rigs to Reefs program. It allows the state of California to consider leaving oil platforms at least partially in place for ecological and economic reasons. Really what has to be considered there is the platform, the biological community associated with the platform, and what's the best alternative to meet everyone's needs. So in some cases it's fine to just cut the tops off and maybe put the tops next to the bottoms on the seafloor to create more seafloor habitat. That's toppling, yeah. And then the other possibility is really kind of getting at well, if we leave the platform structure in place and we, we redevelop it for other purposes, maybe testing wind energy or wave energy, um, we find that actually you can keep more animals because the top part of the platform adds shade 
and it adds habitat for more pelagic species like anchovies and sardines and bonita and things like that. And in addition, because the platform left in place has platforms just above the water, a lot of marine mammals like sea lions use that habitat. So what you've done is now you've got a more complete ecosystem by leaving some of that structure in place. So while that may work for some platforms, it may not be needed for all. Lowe says research gathered over about 15 years shows the platforms may contain more marine life than coral reefs. Yeah, so the study basically looked at a lot of the data that we had collected and other researchers had collected, and, and they tried to estimate how many fish could be on a platform, how much total mass there could be of fish and invertebrates and things like that. And, and th that's where they determined that the productivity of these platforms may exceed that of, say, coral reefs, which people look at and say, wow, those are the most productive environments on the earth. But it turns out that these platforms are even more productive than those. So I think the great thing about platforms for me is that they're like an underwater laboratory. In his research, Lowe has been studying whether fish actually stay at platforms using a technique called acoustic telemetry to track their movements over time. That can help determine how important each platform is to its marine community. And what we found was for Long Beach and Huntington Beach, many of the fish associated with these platforms stay at these platforms for two years. However, some do leave. Some fish move from one platform to another. Some fish leave and go to natural habitat. It's that evidence that helped convince me that these platforms are important to individuals that live there. It's their home. They spend a lot of time there. They rely on it for food. They rely on it for protection. And many of them rely on it to reproduce there. However, Lowe says it takes decades of research to confirm that the oil platforms support life over long periods of time. California has been much more hesitant to turn its obsolete rigs into reefs than states along the Gulf of Mexico, such as Louisiana, Texas, and Alabama. So one of the things I found in, in studying marine biology around the world is that California is really unique. Californians are very ecologically conscious. I think Californians spend more time making sure that something is good for the environment and also good for the public and the, and the uh, economy before they just decide to do something. Offshore oil platforms have made plenty of headlines and incidents such as the 2010 Deepwater Horizon spill in the Gulf of Mexico. One of the difficulties with platforms, or one of the ecological problems, is um, when they do leak and when you have spills. That, that, that's the main reason why many people are so opposed to offshore drilling is that it, while by and large it's relatively safe industry, we've seen uh, examples where spills cause major ecological damage. Many want to hold oil companies accountable for cleaning up after themselves rather than using reefing as an excuse to get out of their original commitment. Before rigs to reefs, the oil companies were under contract to remove the platforms once they stopped pumping oil. While, yes, these are artificial structures and, and some people think that this might become a gateway to allowing people to just dump garbage in the ocean and call it a reef, in this particular case, there's good scientific evidence that suggests these things have benefits to marine organisms and they may have benefits in other ways to society. They just won't be functioning as oil platforms anymore. Oil companies have an incentive not to remove their oil platforms. It saves them millions of dollars. But a good portion of what they save goes back to the state to be placed in a nonprofit trust fund for marine research and preservation. 
Chris Lowe would like to see an oil platform stay intact for another reason. If I had my dream come true, it would be to build a marine lab out of an old oil platform, to convert it from an oil platform into a, a state-of-the-art uh, marine lab where you can take students out, you could do research there, you could have submersibles you launch from it, ROVs, AUVs, you could deploy all this technology and you could do things that you could study nowhere else in the world.